The next book that I have for you is called The Delight of Being Ordinary, A Road Trip with the Pope and the Dalai Lama, uh, written by Roland Merulo, published in 2017. I had absolutely no idea what this book was about. I have never heard of it, but then I came across it in one of the online bookstores and I saw A Road Trip with the Pope and the Dalai Lama. I mean, who wouldn't want to read that, right? I got curious immediately, so I picked it. And I'm glad I did. Um, a quick synopsis of the book is exactly what the phrase said. It's a road trip with the Pope and the Dalai Lama. Um, it's a four-day road trip. So it started off with the Pope that we know now, our current Pope, Pope Francis. And suddenly, Pope Francis had a, had a compelling desire to go on a incognito four-day vacation from being you know, the Pope. Um, and just so it just so happened that in that same week, the Dalai Lama is supposed to visit him in the Vatican. And he decided that why not invite the Dalai Lama on the trip as well. So there you have it. So off they went. Um, they, you know, they donned disguises and they have the Pope and the Dalai Lama had one of the Pope's um, first assistant is what it's called, I think, who also happens to be the Pope's cousin and kind of helped them navigate or go around Italy um, and pretend to be normal folks and interact with people like normal people do. So, so that's the premise, right? And it's interesting. It's very interesting to me because it's a, it's a strange setup. Um, I guess it's an understatement. It's a strange setup and it has that fantasy factor because, um, you know, these things don't happen right? It does not happen. So you could imagine, you could just imagine what kind of conversation w would, would occur between the two, um, the, between the two, the Pope and the Dalai Lama. And, and throughout the story, there's certain um, representations. So for example, the, the Pope's cousin, who is also his first assistant, represents for me, represents for me the, the classic devout um, Christian Catholic, right? He, who believes the faith, who practices the faith, and who is a staunch believer of of Catholicism. And then you have the his cousin's wife, um, who represents the the few, or maybe not so few, <laughs> but who represents those who are agnostic, who doesn't, who used to believe. Um, in in Christianity very faithfully, but then as time goes by, um, they get jaded and, you know, gets to question, gets to ask the age-old questions, why do bad things happen to good people and so on, you know, the, the classic questions. And then another representation is uh, from, from, their own, for their, from their daughter naman, so the daughter of the cousin and the wife, she is a full-fledged believer of Buddhism. So she represents the former Christian slash Catholic who converted into Buddhism because she believes that Buddhism faith um, con conforms or kind of, you know, is more suited to her modern lifestyle. So there you have it. You have like the three different kinds of perspective in the story and then you have the Pope and the Dalai Lama kind of trying to understand um, kind of trying to understand from their perspective from these people's perspective as well as trying to explain to them um, you know the faith so it's a very interesting it's a very interesting story it's a very interesting progress um, you know, they, they go through different parts of Italy and every part of Italy kind of gives you little nuggets of wisdom and little nuggets of, of um, heartfelt, heartwarming story um, from the Pope and the Dalai Lama. And it's quite fun, really. And I guess at the end of it, at the climax, at the peak of the story, is also somewhere towards the end, wherein finally the Dalai Lama and the Pope kind of reveals why they needed to go on a break or to go on a vacation. Apparently, they've been having this 
recurring dream about a little boy or a little girl and they are in search of these children they found them <laughs> so they found the children right that's not a spoiler don't worry but suffice to say at the end of this book at the end of the story that's where the author really kind of gives you the gives you the real meat of what he's trying to say all throughout the journey all throughout the vacation or the road trip it felt it felt like it's just a primer to the major to the real um proposal of the author and really the proposal of the author is a different kind of understanding and a different kind of approach to faith and to religion i'm not going to say any more than that because that is something that you need to find out for yourself if and when you decide to read the book because that is the for me that is the the point of the whole story that's the point of the book um it's a challenge for the reader um it doesn't end it's an open ended uh, it's an open ended conclusion wherein the reader kind of you know you, you need to decide for yourself what is my opinion of this book what is my opinion of or where do i stand about the proposal of the author when it comes to faith and practicing faith in religion and so on so for me that's the beauty of this book i could understand if some would even consider this book a little controversial or a little blasphemous even maybe that's a strong word but you know i could understand that but you know challenge yourself a little give it a shot and try to see you know open your mind a little bit and observe your thoughts your feelings your reactions to to the stories within it is a work of fiction of course um but i believe the ideas here are not new certainly the ideas are not new it is well written it is funny and cheeky but really with ha- that has real heartwarming moments as well so i would recommend you read this if you're in the mood for that um it's it's quite fun it's unique really it's quite quite unique so that's my key takeaway for this book and if that i hope that's helpful and if you're in the mood go give it a shot thank you